If you're looking to build a gaming PC this year, one of the most important components to get right is your CPU choice. And with so many new options on the market, it can be trickier than ever to pick apart the good CPUs from the bad. Just how much money should you spend on a processor and how do all the various naming schemes and letters actually work? Well, in this one, I'll be walking you through it, going through the best chips for the budget 1080p gamer, right through to awesome mid-range, high-end and ultra <laughs> high-end options for those with money to burn. Let's do this. I'm gonna split this video down into five core sections, starting off with the state of the CPU market and explaining how the complicated number and letter schemes work for AMD and Intel. And I'll then walk through my best budget, mid-range, high-end and ultra high-end options. So five components that make this video possible. Feel free to use the navigation bar or the timestamps in the description below to skip to your desired sections. Or maybe even, here's an idea, watch the whole thing start to finish. That would really help my engagement. Anyway, let's begin by looking at the state of the current market. We've got two main players basically on desktop processing processors, AMD and Intel. AMD is red or orange, Intel is blue. Each of these manufacturers will provide a different generation of CPUs to the market every couple of years. Intel are on their 13th generation of processors on the Intel core lineup. The first gen was like oh, 15, 20 years ago, something crazy. Whereas AMD are currently on Ryzen 7000. Rather handily, AMD decided to miss a few numbers along the way, starting off with Ryzen 1000, 2000 and 3000, before skipping four and going straight to five and then skipping six and going straight to seven. In each of their lineups, they'll then also split processors down into different tiers. On the Ryzen side, you have Ryzen 3, 5, 7, and 9. Ryzen 3 chips are the cheapest and least powerful, while Ryzen 9 are the top end options, and the other two are in the middle. Intel are very similar in that they have their i3, i5, i7, and i9 lineups. Now, to make things even more complicated, depending on the exact chip and generation you go for, these processors aren't always built equal. You might find that a brand new i3 actually outperforms an older Ryzen 5, so just bear that in mind. You'll then also find a few different numbers and letters associated with the processor. If the CPU has an X on it for AMD or a K on it, that means it's overclockable and can be pushed a bit more power for faster speeds. While chips on the Intel side of the equation that also contain the letter F don't include any integrated graphics, meaning you'll need a dedicated GPU. Though most people watching this will be watching this for a gaming perspective, meaning an integrated graphics element is not required for your use case. So don't worry too much about chips that have an F on the end on the Intel side of the equation. The general consensus in terms of latest processors is that the Intel 13th gen chips are generally stronger and better value than AMD's Ryzen 7000, though AMD's recently released X3D variants of some of their chips bring 3D cache to the equation, which does help supercharge performance and help their fight against Intel. But I've factored all of that in to my overall recommendations. One or two last things to cover, some chips will come with integrated coolers and some won't, so make sure you keep that in mind. And some chips have more cores than others with better clock speeds than others too. Typically, the latest generation of chips will give you much higher clock speeds than previous. And it's worth noting that Intel CPUs aren't quite built the same as AMD chips. They have a thing called P cores and E cores, performance and efficiency, meaning that a 10 core Intel chip isn't necessarily better than an eight core Ryzen chip, just because it has theoretically a couple more cores, but more on that later. Now let's say you're the budget gamer. Which CPU should you go ahead and actually use? Well, handily, we've actually taken a lot of time and compiled a bit of a test of all the latest CPUs with numbers for each of the chips. Now you'll be able to see here, and we'll explode this graph up to full screen, that it's a pretty even split between AMD and Intel for each area of the market. And you can see that our graph doesn't necessarily have red on one side and blue on the other, as the reality of the matter is that some brands are plainly better at some budgets than others. And there's no overall winner in the CPU market. Now, if you're looking to build a budget-oriented gaming PC, there are a few options we can certainly recommend. Intel's Core i3-12100F, the F, remember, means it has no graphics, is perhaps our favorite choice. With decent clock speeds and a nice core count that only contains Intel's better performance cores, the efficiency cores can be a useful addition, but the performance cores are the ones for gamers that matter, is hands down the best budget chip you can buy right now. While providing fairly similar on-paper performance to something like AMD's Ryzen 5 3600X, this Ryzen chip is about five years old at this point, and Intel's brand new architecture is a better bet for future-proofing and compatibility 
compatibility with other parts. You'll also find that CPUs that are end of life, like for example those Ryzen 3000 series, become harder to source and harder to find motherboards for. The i3-12100F then most certainly the best budget shout. Those four cores and eight threads with a boost clock speed of up to 4.3 gigahertz make it great for playing the latest titles at 1080p. But what if you've got a little bit more money to spend? Do AMD regain their composure in the 1080p market? Sort of, but not really. On the budget end of the i5 Ryzen 5 tier of CPUs, you've got Intel's Core i5-13400F. The 13400F is their lowest end i5 option and is most certainly a solid shout for those looking for top tier performance without breaking the bank. As you can see from some of our testing, the 13400F actually beats out some of AMD's last gen compelling options. It beats out their 5800X3D unbelievably, though that is another strong option for the price point, and also beats out AMD's new top of the range Ryzen 5 chip, the 7600X, a chip that costs $100 more than the 13400F, but fails to deliver superior performance. If you're looking to spend a little less cash at this mid-range, also consider the Ryzen 5 5600X. While a little older at this point, it still holds up well for 1440p gaming, with decent core counts, fast clock speeds, and cheap motherboard and RAM availability. It's really fallen into favour amongst those looking to build great value 1440p systems, and for good reason. A chip like this is best paired up with a 3060-3060 Ti or AMD 6650XT for a killer gaming combo. If you've got a bit more money to spend even still, then you might want to consider AMD's Ryzen 5 7600X, or perhaps more preferably Intel's alternative, the i5-13600K. You can see here that in Cinebench Multicore, for example, the 13600K delivers 23,500 points, more than 9,000 more than AMD's Ryzen 5 equivalent. Look at the single thread performance and the gap does start to change a little bit, the 13600K pulling in 2,026 points, but once again more than AMD's Ryzen 5 7600X, which delivers 1,987. So not a huge difference difference, but still a win for Intel nevertheless on both counts. You might find that the Ryzen option is better if you want better overclocking support on a wider range of motherboards, or if you want to specifically go for a Team Red AMD based gaming PC. Say you want to go for an AMD CPU and GPU access, smart access memory, do all that really techy cool stuff, it might well be worth considering. Those of you with a bit more money to spend shouldn't necessarily jump straight up though to the Ryzen 9 or i9 tier chips. Take the i7-13700K for example. On our list of benchmarks, it actually beats out chips like the 7950X, the non-3D variant, on the single thread side of the equation, while the multi-thread performance, while a bit weaker, is also very strong, beating out AMD's Ryzen 7 and even some of their Ryzen 9 alternatives. But synthetic benchmarks don't always tell the full story, which is where our gaming tests come into play. This is most evident with AMD's new Ryzen 7 7800X3D, a chip widely recognised as the best gaming CPU on the market right now. With a boost clock of 5 gigahertz and just under 100 megabytes of cache, that is staggering. This chip is the perfect addition to any upper mid-range build, and also high-end systems alike. But what if you've got loads of money to spend? Should you consider AMD's new X3D-oriented chips? The answer to that question is certainly yes, but don't discount Intel either. The main advantage of the X3D design is most prominent for gaming applications, and as such, the X3D isn't as useful on the top-end Ryzen CPUs, where the multi-threaded performance is more more likely to be the feature you demand as the consumer. The X3D refresh has allowed AMD to compete at the top end though, bringing them much more close to the 13900K on par in many cases, but for a fairly hefty at times price bump. For gaming oriented tasks, AMD's X3D is what I would go for personally, but the 13900K is a better all round chip for multi threaded productivity based applications. Something that, to be honest with you, most people will probably be doing on an i9 or Ryzen 9 chip. A Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7 are perfectly adequate for gaming oriented scenarios. Even top end builds will be totally fine with that 7 tier processor, given, of course, the fact that they're only going to be used for gaming, and a 9 tier CPU is, if anything, a little bit overkill. But that's not to say overkill is always a bad thing. My personal rig rocks an i9 12900K and a 4090. It doesn't really need to have that kind of hardware. But of course, the enthusiast and the nerd inside of us would always rock a config like that if they could. So to summarize, let me give you a bit of a rundown of where on earth we're at. For a budget-oriented chip, you want an i3. AMD's Ryzen 3 offering hasn't been updated in years, and as such, the i3 is the only real viable option. Move to the mid-range and you want either a Ryzen 5000, Ryzen 5 
5 tier chip or a slightly more up to date i5 13th gen processor that will provide similar performance on a newer architecture for basically the same price. On the top end of the equation, don't discount Intel's i7 13700K. It's one of my favorite chips from their lineup. Bit of an underdog, really, to be honest with you. Or, of course, the 7800X3D, a chip which has shown itself to be a strong market leader for high end gaming. While top end buyers should look at the 13900K or 7950X. And with that, I think I can take a breather because we've run through the very best in CPUs that you can buy right now. If you enjoyed this one, make sure to drop a like right in. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions, crews or otherwise. Thanks for tuning in. And as always, we'll see you very, very soon.